Robert Chun, and I'm here with Reverend Betty Tataleski, founder of the Temple of Universality here in Tucson, Arizona, and for another session of Steps Beyond Time. And the topic today, I believe, is healing. We believe it is. All right. Yes, we think that's what we're going to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give it a go. Yes, well, you know, with all of the uh, sickness going on and, um, and um, money being used for other things besides um, healing, you know, and Medicare and all of that. But, um, you know, getting down to the basics of it, <clears throat> we're going to become tenders of ourselves and responsibil mm -hmm. responsible for ourselves and, you know, and uh, just... Um, the very simple phrase, uh, uh, physician, heal yourself. Uh, uh, Luke uh, 4.23, Jesus said that. It just, uh, and we seem to forget it. You know, oh, well, you know, a lot of people carry around the Bible, you know, and, you know, do you believe every word in here? Well, yeah. Well, but you ask them if they think you can heal themselves and if you have the commission and the, um, uh, to do that. Oh, well, no, you know, I have to have insurance, I did, did I, and, uh, but you know, it's, um, it's amazing. He either said it was, what he said was true, or it's not, okay? That's right. And uh, so that's what he said, physician, heal yourself. So, you know, and I think about that, and it's certainly uh, more important for us to be aware of that truth all the time, that we have the, the ability mm -hmm. and the responsibility to do it. Now um, we have the necessity. A necessity, <laughs> yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, as Mama used to say, invention is the uh, grandchild or something of, uh, uh, or these, yeah. yeah. So you have to, it's a do-it-yourself project. And so I got to thinking about the people that have done this, and I'm thinking back to uh, the middle of the, you know, 1860s, um, the middle of the 18th century, and I'm thinking about Phineas Quimby because he's one of my, one of my heroes, and um, he's in, uh, inadvertently, you know, the um, they're responsible for that great Christian uh, science movement, um, uh, founded by Mary Baker Eddy. Well, you remember that Mary Baker Eddy was so ill that she had been confined to bed for a long time. She was not able to get out of bed. She was totally bedridden and in lots of pain. And so she heard about this uh, great man who was uh, uh, silently over here, lives, we would say off the radar. But there were a lot of people who privately knew about his ability to hypnotize. They called it mesmerism. And actually, he was using the um, techniques of uh, Anton Mesner. Mesmer. Mesmer, yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, but anyway, they worked. Uh, uh, he was also a, a spiritualist. Uh, if you get into uh, mesmerism and these, then you become, you know, a spiritualist. That's what it's, what it's about, working with the spirit of the body working with the spirit that's around you. So anyway, she's uh, desperately in need of healing. She is not on her way there. She, there she Things look very bleak for her. <clears throat> and uh, so she finds out about him, a lot of all the people that he has healed. Now, as he would say, I haven't healed anybody, but I have uh, facilitated uh, their awareness of how they do it themselves because each person is responsible. Mm -hmm. Now, it seems like that we are creating so many diseases, and now, um, now people that hear that say, no, it just happens to you. But we're aware from the spirit world that thoughts are things and that we are very creative and that we are creating through diseasement of mind uh, and putting these curses on ourselves and on humanity, and then looking out for other folks to fix us. So uh, I know that uh, there's a lot of uh, talk about whether Mary Baker Eddy came uh, into these principles herself, but the fact was uh, she wasn't able to do that for over a year and more. She stayed at his house, unable to move, until he taught her the Bible in the way that it was written, physician, heal yourself. And then I'm sure that he went into those little truths about uh, as a man thinks it is, uh, you know, and all of these principles, which 
put the responsibility on you, but it also puts the healing on you too. And, and with the help of the spirit world, uh, and, uh, and a lot of people say, well, we call it the Holy Spirit. All of these people that we're talking about, they're holy folks, you know, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. So it's, uh, we know that this um, is how Christian science uh, began and what an incredible movement it is around the world. And so many people have helped themselves and are doing that. So we owe a lot to Phineas Quimby, Mary Baker Eddy, and all of uh, uh, Anton Mesner, and all the people who were awake at that time who were helping, not for money, but to do the right thing as they saw it. So, you know, and you wonder, well, how, how can I do it myself? Well, it's uh, telling the mind, you know, that, that it's perfect. So I'm thinking about back at um, 2000, you know, when I took my uh, friends, there were 12 of us, to, to um, uh, China, Malaysia, and Tibet, and Tibet for the Vesak Festival. So when I came back, I was tired. Well, I've never been that tired before. I was still able to go to my classes, teach my classes and all, but when I wasn't, I was real tired, okay? So then one week later, when I'm at Camp Chesterfield at my spiritualist camp, uh, and uh, this new doctor whom I had never met, spirit doctor, Dr. Thorndike says, comes in, and he says, I'm Dr. Thorndike. He said, Betty, the reason you've been tired since your trip is because we have done major surgery on your heart, and you're recuperating from that. And uh, uh, he said, we did pep you up for you to be able to stand in your podium, teach your classes and all, but in between, you were tired. And I said, yeah. And he said, um, do you know by what authority we were able to do that? Because I didn't know his name. I didn't know that I had any problem. It never manifested in any way. I felt fine. You see, I don't see doctors professionally. I've got a lot of friends. friends but and you, and you eat Southern. And I eat Southern. <laughs> that means there's a cup of sugar and everything I eat. Uh, makes us talk slow, you know. But uh, anyway, it, it, it's good. It all is good. But um, uh, so anyway, he said, do you want to know by what authority I was able to do that? And Yeah. And, and he said, well, every morning when you put your feet on the floor, you say, thank you, God, for my perfect health, don't you? And I said, yes. He said, that was the commission. Mm. Uh -huh. As a man or woman thinks uh -huh. in their heart. Uh -huh. And here you're walking around, you're running up and down uh, the Potala, uh -huh. you're 16,000 feet in yeah. Lhasa, wow. and you're perfect, yeah. you know? And you wonder when, why you're tired. Well, we just did major surgery on your heart. Now, he said, remember that we cannot come into the spirit, into the third dimension, unless we have it hold a commission, which is our name. He said, no, you don't have to speak it, but just think, uh, my, because everything is vibration, just think my name once or twice a week, and I am able to work on this. And besides that, here is my surgical team of five other surgeons introduced me to them. And I uh, said, not necessary to know their names, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'd like to. Yeah. <laughs> he, he introduced, but I forgot. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, it's physician, heal thyself. Well, you know, uh -huh. Betty, um, the interesting thing is, um, after we heard that story, uh -huh. uh, Martha and I, every morning, we say thank you for our perfect health. Thank you for our perfect health. health. Whoever's listening yes. out here. All yes. of the spirit world, yes. the great masters, yes. and they want to work. Sure. But you you see, know, they didn't go over there no. to lie in the sun. No. They the, don't get to do that. The amazing thing about spiritualism mm -hmm. or finding out about this aspect mm -hmm. of our consciousness and our reality mm -hmm. is, 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 is sort of like um, mm -hmm. when you don't know about it, you're blind to it. You're just, you don't see it. You don't hear it. It's right it's here, here and you don't and see it. And you don't it. see it. No. All right. And, but it's, it's sort of like positive thinking. Uh -huh. When you start playing with positive thinking, it, works. it becomes more powerful. It, it's, yes. It's, and, and before, 
You just thought whatever you thought, yes. did whatever you did. But you didn't know that your thoughts were magnetic. Power. Yes. They're magnetic. Yes. You had no idea. And all of these people that make transition are working are, their way up. Yes. And they want to work. Yes. That it's, we're surrounded. Isn't that amazing? Yes, it's amazing. And this is the thing that, that's, that's astounding in, in the sense that what it is is that we are not isolated, though it appears we are. It, we're not separate. So it appears we are. We're not alone. We are blessed, that we, yeah, yes. surrounded, cared we, for. We are blessed, surrounded, and cared for. But it's an, it's an experience that they wait for us to trigger. They wait on us. It, you have to do it. It's, it we call it wake up. That's, yes. that's the whole thing. Yep. Wake up before you die. Yep. But I want to talk about miracles, too. You know, I could, I could talk forever yeah, on yeah. just miracles, yeah. you know. Because people think they're not happening. Well, like St. Mm. Jude said, they're not happening so much because you're not asking anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I know a lot of people's lives have been saved, mm -hmm. families have been saved mm -hmm. because of, of St. Jude mm -hmm. alone, mm -hmm. besides all of the other uh, great ones over here who are trying to pull us up. It's just like your kid fell in a well and you're going to let them float down there, you know? No, you're going to do everything in your yeah. power to get that kid yeah. out of that well. Yeah. Well, that's what spirit does. Yeah. They do everything they can to wake you up. And so uh, I met a, uh, on a trip to Greece a few years ago, um, my sister, a couple of my sisters and, uh, and one of my ministers we're on this um, extended trip, and we were in the Aegean Islands. And when we got to um, one of the particular small islands, our guide that day's name was Maria. Okay, and she had more energy. I mean, you know, we're it, it's all rocks. You know that. And so you would climb over one rock and down a gully, one. and you're up on another one. You know. <laughs> And, and of course, the energy and the spirit of Greece is so invigorating, yes. and you want to see every rock and stone and statue. And so, but um, here she's like a gazelle, hopping from one to another. Well, uh, she did that, and, and we got in the bus and uh, her little van, and then we went to a church. She says, I want to take you to this church because I spent the night here sleeping on the floor, hardwood floor, stone floor, stone floor, mm -hmm. stone cold. Yeah. And um, she said, I slept on the floor last night because this is dedicated to St. Nectarios, and, and I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, but St. Ne Nectarios. So... She said, you know, four years ago, four years ago, I had what you call a Christopher Reeves break. Mm, back. I was quadriplegic. Wow, yeah. She said, I was a guide then, yeah. loved it. Yeah. And someone wanted to take my picture. And they said, so I got on this rock, and then I adjusted myself incorrectly, and fell oh, wow. down a gully of rocks, uh, and uh, so she was not, was unable to move anything. And the doctor said, "You have a Christopher Reeves break." Uh, at the same, at the time, he was still over here dealing with his, and and what he was teaching us is that um, you're not your body, yeah, you're your spirit. Yeah. And he taught that, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. And that's where she was. No hope. But her body was sort of failing. Everything was, you know, weak and so forth. And so uh, there was a doctor in London uh, that they were taking her to see. And uh, it was just to keep her alive. It was, there, it was a hopeless case. But they said this doctor can, has the magic touch of keeping you alive, you know. And uh, not that she really cared, yeah. uh, but her family did. Sure. So uh, as she was leaving uh, Greece, Athens, at the airport, a f one of the friends that came with her handed her a prayer card, and it was St. Nectarios, the modern-day uh, Greek saint. And she just had it in her hand. She says, without thinking, I clasp it. Without thinking, I had it with me the whole trip. And when I was at the hospital with my hand clasped, they thought I couldn't open, open my hand. hand. Wow. 
Wow. But somebody pried my fingers open and saw the prayer card as I was going into surgery and somebody wanted to take it out of my hand and the doctor said, let her keep it. That doctor who was only there to sustain her life and so he did his part and she came out of there um, and within a month, she was perfectly healthy. Wow. Perfectly yeah. healthy. He had not worked on any part of the body to get it going. It was only the, um, uh, uh, medicine, the medical part that he was aware, uh, doing. But um, anyway, this is St. Nectarios, the modern day saint of Greece. I have great love and respect for him. And so uh, I got this uh, in that little village so that I could focus. It's a focus for me for people with spinal cord injuries. When I came back, um, there was a young woman in my intervision class who worked with a uh, group of people here in Tucson that work with uh, spinal cord injuries. I knew nothing of this. But when I told her the story, uh, she, um, f of course, investigated and then uh, invested some time in that. I w and I told her, go to the Greek, a beautiful Greek church here in Tucson uh, on Mountain and uh, Fort Lowell uh -huh. and learn more about him because that's what I did. I also found out, uh, you know, that they have a great rate of miracles there, probably more than they know. And so uh, the spirit world works very closely uh, with the churches, with the people who have great intention of helping other folks. Uh, so she took the information and she wrote, uh, did a pamphlet in, in, uh, involving and honoring the saint. Uh, and uh, did this for that organization. So there are people that are quietly getting the, the word out there. We would just like to help them along and say, nothing is impossible. All things are possible. So anyway, you can imagine how much I appreciate uh, this, this spirit. Just like, you know, for every gathering we have, you know, two or more are gathered in my name. I'm there. The Holy Spirit's there. So mostly a lot, you know, we get together and we say, Gabby's doing well. Gabrielle Giffords is doing well. Today there's a mention of her in the paper. We want to all hold her in our hearts. And our, we, she's in our hearts. We want to hold her in our thoughts and the visualization of the perfection that she is going toward and uh, the great energy that she has and the determination and the working with with good the good is spirit a good spirit her own spirit and her good intention now what a great example what a great hero she is uh, for Look at the thousands of brain damaged people uh, from just a few years of the war, you know, yeah. and, and what a heroine yeah. that she is for all of these people. So we want to keep her at this great uh, symbol, symbol of God's possibilities where nothing is impossible. See, that's, you know, <laughs> Betty, this is what I, I, I find so astounding about this <laughs> world. <laughs> Because we live in a three-dimensional reality where everything appears to be as it is. And, and it's not a good reality for most. It's very difficult, and there's a lot of challenges. And what's really extraordinary is that it isn't the way it is. It's nothing like, like it, it is. is. But, I, and, 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 but until you step outside that bounds, until you get out your of your little box, box until you put your head through the wall, you think it's solid. You think it's solid. Until you begin to, to use faith in a positive manner. Until you begin to believe that you're worthy of love, that God doesn't care, the great spirit doesn't care who you are, what you've because done. Because you're a part, you're of, a part him. of him. Created, Created in his, his image. image. Totally unlimited. Yes. yes. You can wander all you want. 
and it doesn't change your nature. They'll let you uh, it let you sleep forever, forever. if you want. Yeah. But you know what? I have a different take on it. Mm. I didn't enjoy being asleep. <laughs> And so I think there are a lot of folks out here that don't want to be, and if they don't want to be, I want to help them to wake up. Well, you know, Betty, that's what The Course in Miracles said. The reason why you can't sleep forever, the reason why you can't stay in, an, in a state of apparent separation, it says this, it's too painful. It's too painful. It's too painful. It's, there are a lot of nightmares yes. in being, a, being asleep. Yes, and it's at a certain you think point. It, you think it's true. But, when you've mm. reached your limit, you reach your limit. It's going to go on somewhere in your soul. There's mm -hmm. got to be a better way. A better way. And that turns you back to the light. And then we're driving and we see that we see the, uh, uh, and tell me what to do, God. Tell me what to do. And then there's a car in front of it. Let go and let God. I wonder what that means. And yeah. I keep driving, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The answer is I need do nothing. nothing. This is, we are mm -hmm. in a miracle. Mm -hmm. We are a miracle, and for those of you who are looking, this is what is, it's there. And if you, you, all you have to do is voice your intention, think your intention, seek the happiness that you want. Whether or not you think it's possible or not, just seek it. If that's really in your heart, seek it. And you, you could end up at our temple, you may not end up there. There's many paths. Many paths. There are many paths. And everyone has one. But you know what? Uh, so many people, actually, so many people were introduced to multiple levels of consciousness uh -huh. in the world uh, instead of just a flat, you know, flatlanders here by NDEs, near-death experience. Sure. I mean, we were awed, yeah. you know, oh my God, my, my kid came back and he yes. saw Jesus. Yeah. And he saw, you know, yeah, these uh, stories. Uh, right. yeah. in India, you yeah. know, they came back and said, you know what, that's really, my daddy's really my cousin, you know, yeah. from another life, you yeah. know. And so, oh gosh, the kid was, you know, just, it's bad enough he's got a broken leg, now he's, you know. So, <laughs> but anyway, it happens, it's happening yeah. so, so much. Yeah. Uh, and so that is one of the doors. Yes. I mean, there are nu innumerable doors yep. um, of, of consciousness and windows to open up uh, to get in. And, uh, you know, mine was a spiritualist church. Uh, yeah. But, um, and, and we hope people have that, you know, when Same they're interdirected at, at our church too, yeah, and or that, our that, temple. That's our, that's our belief is that you, when you're looking, when it's your time, when, you, when you're seeking something more, you will find it because there is more. And until then, Betty, we're just going to keep doing it. We're just yeah. keep going to keep saying, hey, honey, come on over and join us because um, heaven is a wonderful place. And like Daddy said, heaven's not a place you go just because you're not good. It's a place you uh, created in your mind because you said it could. So master your uh, mind and and come into heaven. And you don't have to wait to die. To, that's what daddy says, yeah. you know, from heaven. You don't have to die to go to heaven. It's not a place like they said. And you'll never, ever be dead. Betty's mm -hmm. father, who I've heard. <laughs> I mean, I've many heard times. many times. Um, shot himself, all right? Mm -hmm. Good Southern Baptist. He had, he had made a vow mm -hmm. that if he, his wife was taken away from him, if he couldn't protect her anymore, uh, that he, was, he had failed in his responsibility if to she her. Had to, if she had to go into a nursing home? She had to go into a nursing home. That, that, that I'll was, kill myself. He'll, and, and he did. <laughs> He's who, a, who, who would think? You yeah, know? yeah, but he, but he did. But he did. Yeah, he was a man of his convictions. He did. Southern Baptist believed with all his heart he was going to go to hell because that's what, worked so hard, raised nine children. Yeah, did did the did. hard work, did it like a yeoman. Did did, did thing. At the end, it was so terrible. He did himself in, and he came back and told Betty, Betty. He said, "I was so surprised when I." Just like you told just, me. Just like you told me. I thought it was going to be horrible. And it, it isn't. And, and, and 20 years now, he's yeah. a teacher. Yes. He comes in and teaches, you know. Yes. There's, there's more, folks. It's real. If you want to join us every Sunday, 11 o'clock, Temple of Universality at the corner of Country Club and Prince. Thank Reverend Betty Cataleski. Thank you, friends. God bless you. God bless you. That's good.